to a lot of information and a lot of names. Um, the release of the report sounds really fancy. But the reality is also that SHI represents a group of organizations whose members are not that complicated. They are people who are in search of the basic principles of the American dream. They just want to have a safe place to live, an apartment they can call home, and a roof over their family's head. None of these things happen without good government, though. So accordingly, a government agency that is funded to serve the poor should not be allowed to be dysfunctional or low-performing just because it serves the poor rather than the rich, those who are still in search of stability and a home rather than those who already have it. Yes. Yes. CTBA's report reveals that the CHJ has consistently failed to use public funds entrusted to the agency effectively, fully, accountably, or transparently. We are here not only to discuss the problems at CHA, but also to talk about solutions. In the coming months, we will be introducing the Keeping the Promise Ordinance, which will give the City Council much greater oversight over the power of the CHA. The ordinance will allow that the pro will make sure that the problems that are in the report do not continue and are never allowed to happen again. It will make sure that the families who are still in search of housing are able to find that. Tina is a mother of four and one of the thousand families who have applied for CHA's assistance and housing with housing but has been denied. Ms. Tina Ward. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. yet I am the voice of men. I am a single mother of four children. Three of my four children have disabilities. They have special needs. I myself have a disability as well. I'm here today to speak on behalf of myself and other single parents who also share my story. Each day often brings its fair share of struggles. I often cry because as a mother, I want to provide fully for my children and when the basic necessities aren't being met, I feel as though I'm letting my children down. No mother should ever be put in this situation. However, it happens far too often. In an attempt to alleviate and relieve some of these pressures, I've applied for housing. Each time that I've applied, I was told, thank you for your recent application. However, your application has been denied. It saddens me that families that could have adequate housing are denied that right and no one is being held accountable. Something needs to be done about the way in which CHA operates. These practices are faulty in my opinion to say the very best. All right. Everyone, and I do mean everyone, has the right to live and not just exist. The funding is available to assist in these efforts, yet no one seems to care. Today is my birthday. My birthday wish is for the city council to hold the housing authority accountable and afford these families adequate housing while working to decrease homelessness in our city. Yes. which frees the CHA from much of the oversight HUD usually exercises 
for public housing agencies. Moving to work gives the CHA financial flexibility and, as our report details, this has allowed the agency to spend money at its discretion. This financial flexibility allowed the CHA to divert money intended for issuance of housing vouchers to other uses. Our analysis finds that between fiscal year 2008 and fiscal year 2012, the CHA had issued, on average, 13,534 fewer housing vouchers than unfunded. This is not because of lack of demand, but rather because of reallocation of funds to line items that do not constitute actual spending. One is not cash outlays. By diverting federal revenue received for housing vouchers to discover and instead cover non cash outlays, we found that the CHA's reserves funds have grown significantly over the last decade. In fact, between fiscal year 2008 and fiscal year 2012, the CHA's annual surplus was $107 million. Our analysis found that by not spending the federal re revenue received for housing voucher programs, the CHA built up a total of $432 million in available reserves in fiscal year 2012. 